This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. What's up, Detroit sports fans? Welcome to the Fan Report, a show made by fans for fans, powered by the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I'm Nick, and with me, Zanders, who's going to give us this week's topics. The NFL decided to recognize Detroit as an actual sports city for once. And in the month of March, the NBA Rookie of the Year race really heated up. We're going to talk about both. It's a fan report. You know, is it wrong? Well, okay. How cliche of it of me is it to say that the city of Detroit got its Super Bowl? Because <laughs> I know every I single is basically the Super Bowl here. I mean, not- it is, <laughs> but every single media source just beats that joke into the ground like the deadest of all horses. Mm-hmm. That the draft is the Lions fans' Super Bowl, which. I mean, it, it, in all reality, it kind of is because we don't have anything to be excited about after week 18 now. Well, this year, for some people, the Super Bowl the was playoffs. our Super Bowl. This year, for some people, the Super Bowl was our Super Bowl. We like to call those people losers <laughs> um, and fanboys. Uh, I, I don't believe in the Detroit Rams mm-hmm. mantra or the whatever. It, I, I, I think anybody who's walking around in one of those shirts is a loser. Come at me all you want. I'll second that notion. But yeah, the, the Detroit is going to be hosting the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, have they announced a venue? I would assume it's Fo- the Fox. No, it's actually, weather permitting, going to be outdoors. Dave Burkett said they are going, he tweeted out, weather permitting, the draft will be outside at Campus Marshes. Music events will be held at Ford Field and or LCA. Fireworks on the river and all around the city. How do I get tickets? I mean, you could just come up to my building. You can watch from the window. I'm in. <laughs> for free. I'm in. Um, <laughs> no, straight up, though, that, honest to God, sounds like a great idea. Because what, what yeah. month is the draft in? April. So you're, you're rolling the dice in you Michigan. You're rolling, rolling the, dice. the dice. That is definitely rolling the dice. <laughs> I have is not heard. Late April. Dave Burkett said weather permitting. I have not heard what the plan is, weather not permitting. So <laughs> how are they going to know? Like, are, are they going to day of scramble to put it somewhere else? They, they, they're probably going to. They, my guess is they're going to have backup procedures in place. And if anything looks even remotely dicey for that day, like just something like a 10 day forecast, if anything looks remotely dicey for that day, they might just start setting up at plan okay, B but location. The weather changes on the daily for it does. a 10 day forecast in this. Yeah. Day. Like I, 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 I don't to, think you can do. I went that. to the I Pistons think. game on on Sunday against the Knicks. A week prior, it was supposed to be low fifties and partly sunny, and by game day, it was twenty nine degrees and fully cloudy. Yeah, it was miserable. <laughs> um, like I straight up think if you want to have a, a plan for an outdoor event in mm-hmm. April in this town, like the NFL draft, that people are dressed nice, it's about how you look, you want to put this image out there then you need to quite quite literally set up and decorate another venue for a potential draft should it be yeah. bad weather that day. Like, you need to set up two drafts. One Unless they plan on Marshes putting outdoors. some kind of, like, uh, pseudo-tent over Campus Marshes or something. Oh, what a beautiful way to showcase the city. Let's just put a <laughs> big-ass tent over Campus Marshes. I don't think that's the option. <laughs> And, but I can already see how that setup would work. Kevin Marsh said, "I can already, I can already envision." Oh, the whole I thing, think but. it's awesome. Like, I if if the weather is nice, like maybe maybe mm-hmm. we could push the back the draft back to May. How's that sound? I know it's <laughs> not going to happen, but like, <laughs> if the weather is nice and it's mm-hmm. like you know a, a, a nice sixty five outside, let's let's do that. Mm-hmm. Sixty five clear weather. Detroit's absolutely beautiful, and that's a great yeah. way to showcase the city. Like, it, but I totally would have time, thought it would have been at LCA. I, that's what I would have thought. I feel showcase like that's too big a, of a venue a new, for that, though. Showcase a new venue. I know you can close well, why off does, parts why of it. Why would the NFL give a shit about LCA? Because the, because Ford Field has now, in terms of the grand scheme of stadiums, become a little bit outdated. Okay, but my question again. Why the hell would the NFL give a shit about LCA? They have nothing to do with it. Neither neither do any of the fans. Have no, it's to just it's just because it's basically the best, most modern venue in the city. That's all. Eh, I I don't see that being like yes, that is likely where they would end up putting it. Mm-hmm. I just don't see it as like something to showcase Detroit. Like it, it, it the, doesn't matter. 
But the thing is, if they're saying they're going to be music events held at both Ford Field and LCA, you can't use this back as backup plans anymore. No. They're already set up for their music right. events. Yeah, my <laughs> assumption is the backup plan is like Cobo Hall. Sorry, mm-hmm. not Cobo Hall. What is it now? TCF Center? Nope, Huntington now. Huntington Center. Yeah, they've changed the name like seven <laughs> times in the last year. I can't keep it straight. Like that's my assumption is the backup plan, or they don't. Mm-hmm. Well, they can't delay it today. There's no way they can do that. Um, but like, the, think about it this way: the last time the NFL had a major event in the city of Detroit was What's the Super Bowl. Super Bowl in 2004, mm-hmm. and Detroit was not exactly in a great time period back then. Like we were in the midst of some of the worst time in the history of the city. Uh, it, it was run down. It looked like hell. It wasn't a great place to go. It, there wasn't much to do down there because what there was to do, it's it was at the time probably kind of scary to go down for some people. I still remember how surreal it felt that like all the coverage I was watching up to Super Bowl was all in Detroit. And I'm like, it's just so weird to me that they're all here. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, why are you all here? <laughs> <laughs> but think about what has changed in the last well, it would have been 20 years at that point. Think about all that's changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've got the new arena. We, we've we got Woodward is a hopping place. Greektown's a hopping place. Like, mm-hmm. it all over. Campus Martius is a great place to be. Like, mm-hmm. people go down and hang out in the city. And quite frankly, it's a really pretty city. Like, it's it's really nice down there in downtown. Yeah. And it's Take a good place who to works be down and go there. out. There's I love being of, down there. There's a lot of great restaurants, a lot of mm-hmm. great bars, and in my opinion, the greatest dive bars in all of the country. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot to do and a lot to be proud of in this city. And, mm-hmm. and to get an opportunity to showcase that, and I, I talk with a lot of people around the country, and every time the city of Detroit is brought up, it's, oh, what a shithole who would want to go there? Why would anybody want to go there? And I, you mm-hmm. know obviously as a native feel the need to defend it a little bit here and there because it is a nice city. It is pretty down there. It is a great place to hang out and it has gotten a lot better over the last 20 years. There's no question about it. So this yep. gives this, you know, us Detroiters an opportunity to say, look at me now mm-hmm. to the, to the world basically. And there was a Packers fan on Twitter who was, I can't remember his Twitter handle, but he was all up in arms that the NFL chose Detroit over green Bay for the draft. And he did like what compar- in the hell is in Green Bay? He, he did comparison pictures and he he just showed like the nicest parts of Green Bay and then he showed random alleyways in Detroit. And I'm like, okay, I could just show nice parts of Detroit and then show random alleyways in Green Bay. Like <laughs> you don't even have to show alleyways of Green Bay. There's nothing in Green Bay. Yeah. They've got like four restaurants and three bars. Who cares? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never been to Green Bay, so I have no idea. Yeah, no, but you know either. what? I have no desire to go for anything more than a football game. So <laughs> That tells you how much I care about the city of Green Bay. It, <laughs> it it doesn't move the needle for me. I'd go to Milwaukee in a heartbeat. Green Bay. Oh yeah, I've heard, Mil- I've heard Milwaukee is really nice. I've heard Milwaukee is an awesome place to go to. But mm-hmm. it's so. Nice how much that- do draft tickets generally go for? I have not the faintest idea. <laughs> not the faintest idea. Like it. It. I like honestly though. I will be checking because that is an excuse me an event. I honestly would be pretty excited to go to and not just because, oh, the Lions, who at that point probably will still have a top five pick. I would hope not. I That was more be, me being facetious, but mm-hmm. not just because it's a Lions fan that is our Super Bowl, but because it is a cool event and a great opportunity for us as Lions fans to show out, show out a little bit. Um, it looks like the for next month's draft in Vegas. It looks like they might be sold out of just the Friday only package, but the Saturday only package. So rounds two and three. Rounds four through seven. Oh. Uh, thir- Thursday and Friday only, I think, are both sold out. Um, Thursday, Thursday, and f- I bet you Thursday, Thursday is like you have to know somebody to get a ticket for it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, rounds four through seven. That includes a ticket, um, in-draft hospitality. Don't know what that means. Probably food or drinks or something. Yeah, that's my assumption. Um, post-draft concert and NFL draft gift. Those are all included in the package. Ooh, start we at, get a t-shirt. Start at $750 <laughs> a person. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Now, they still have the three-day experience package available. That's okay. all three days. Um 
including red carpet access during the first round of the draft and access to both draft concerts on Friday and Saturday. That starts at $2,500 a person. Jesus Christ. Yep. I and mean, I think- I, that is Vegas, but I do expect prices yeah. to go up over the next couple of years because, well, it's, you know, the, look at the state of our country at the moment. Yep. Just natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it may be like a once in a lifetime thing, you know? But it's the NFL draft. <laughs> like, Again, we could probably just watch from my building. Right. <laughs> like, and then just, we'll have it on, like, we'll have it streaming on our phone or something, and then we'll watch what's actually happening in person or from, the, from the window. <laughs> Like, is can I get NFL you up draft, to my floor? That's a different question. Is, <laughs> is the NFL draft something that is that big of a deal? Like, I get it. It's it's no, a it's, cool it's event. It's great that it's coming to the city mm. because you know what it is, is it's a little bit of a showcase to see how Detroit can handle a large NFL gathering and a large NFL event, because if they do well, there's a chance they could get another Super Bowl. Now they'd have yeah. to spruce the hell out of Ford Field and make some major mm-hmm. upgrades. Yep. But oh. it sh- it gives the city an opportunity to showcase that, hey, yeah. we can handle something bigger than this. To me, the only thing that makes the ticket worth it is uh, depending who the concert performers are, who the artists are going to be. If I'm getting, if I'm getting like a legit, dude, you'd have to raise, you'd have I'm- to raise <laughs> Prince and Michael Jackson from the dead to get me to <laughs> like spend that kind of money at a concert. <laughs> and Tupac, Eminem's got to be there. Biggie's got to be there. Like, you know, I don't think I've ever paid more than a hundred dollars for a concert to begin exactly. with. Exactly. Well, I, you know what? I think the most I paid for a concert is one hundred fifty bucks. Who was that? Wasn't Queen that much? Queen was hundred. Was it was actually like ninety something? Was it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was more. Okay, then maybe ninety. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm. I'm gonna guess a hundred bucks. Let's just say that. But. It's a good opportunity for the city of Detroit. It's cool that the NFL isn't just ignoring us like most sports <laughs> leagues do. And honestly, an event at Campus Marsh just like that, I I think that'd be pretty sweet. Like, mm-hmm. I, as, as weather permitting, I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Another thing going down, Hard Knocks coming to Detroit this yeah, summer. right. I've never actually watched the show. I'll love with Me you neither. right here. Me neither. Oh, so so we're two people talking about Hard Knocks who never watched Probably Hard Knocks. Probably the only right. two football fans who haven't watched Hard Knocks. <laughs> but I will be watching it this summer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, do you do you have any reservations about it being a distraction at all, or are you just purely happy about Detroit finally landing Hard Knocks? I'll be honest with you. I never wanted Hard Knocks here. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I've never wanted them to be here. Mm-hmm. I am excited this time. One, because distraction or not, I don't give a damn. This team's not very good anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to make a difference. Two, I want to dig really deep into some of the personalities in this locker room and and showcase them a little bit because Dan Campbell's a big personality. Jamal Williams. Well, to have him mic'd up 24-7. Will be wild. Jamal Williams. How many times does he say the word kneecap throughout the season? Zero. You say zero. You don't think he yells at people? You got to bite him in the kneecap. I mean, has he ever said it outside of the introductory press conference? I don't think. It, well, like, <laughs> no, he may have to his players. Maybe. But yeah, Jamal Williams is our guy who's always super entertaining interviews and stuff. Love so him. I love Frank him. Rag now with his uh, grizzly man or whatever his ma- man, uh, mantra is. That he's a mm-hmm. guy who someone who's entertaining. <laughs> I mean, the football family, the St. Browns with Amon Ra and Equinemius. Obviously, Equinemius is in Green Bay, but that's somebody to pay attention to. You've got DJ Chark coming to town. That's another name that we, Lions fans will be excited about. Uh, Inside track on the Jeff Okuda comeback trail with the third number now in his career. If I had a cricket strap, I would have played it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do hope he comes back strong and comes back well. I, we We need him. <laughs> But it's a good chance. Whoever the rookie for, is going to be, yeah, you get, to get you get a first look at Malik Willis. Oh, I God, I hope not. <laughs> Man, Again, I'm not going to lie to you. I am getting more and more scared that he's at gonna 32, be there. I'll take the swing. But that's See, it. But at 32, I don't want. He's not going to be there. <laughs> oh, like sure. At 32, I'd take Malik Willis. I won't take any other quarterback at 32, though. I don't like any of them. Oh, they're all, they're I agree. all trash. You I know agree. what? I compare this. this I'm just saying, if Malik Willis, by the grace of God, is in at 32, sure. Take this get thing. the Put gas that, mask no. out then. Um, <laughs> you know what? I compare the quarterbacks in this draft to 
Do you remember the year that had like Curtis Painter, Jake Locker, that draft? That's what I compare this to. Is Blaine Gabbard in that draft too? I have no idea, opinion. but like that year <laughs> is what I compare this draft to. Just an awful, <laughs> god awful quarterback here. You're not wrong. Let's see. Who were all the quarterbacks that won that draft? All right. You had, well, Cam Newton went first overall. Okay. What's he doing now? Something. He had like three good years. Uh, Jake Locker went number eight. Christian Ponder went number 12. In all fairness to Cam Newton, his is mostly oh, injury related. Yep. Now he can't throw Blaine Gabbert went 10. Okay. That's quite a few quarterbacks in the. Uh, Wait, start over. You had there. Cam Newton, who? Cam Newton went one. Blaine, uh, Jake Locker went eight. Blaine Gabbert went 10. Christian Ponder went 12. That's Christian four quarterbacks. That's who I was thinking of. Four quarterbacks in the top 12. And then you had Andy Dalton go 35. Wow, that's terrible. That, that, that QB draft is pretty terrible. To say that Andy Dalton was one of the top two most successful quarterbacks yeah. coming out of a draft, that's embarrassing. Yeah, I was say career-wise, it's, it's Cam Newton. It's but Cam Newton. For, He's yeah. been to a Super Bowl. Uh, he won an MVP. <laughs> but nowadays, Taylor at the age of this. like... Tyrod Taylor won the sixth round of that draft. Ah, shit, that's probably the best pick of them all. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of Cam Newton. Obviously, he's given, yeah. put the respect on his name. He won an MVP, and he went to a Super Bowl. He's like 32 years old and isn't even on a football team now. So mm-hmm. how good is he now? You know what I can say about some of these guys? They're, well, no, I can't because none of them are on football teams except maybe Tyrod Taylor and Blaine Gabbert. Andy Dalton still is, isn't he? I think he's still on the Bears. Okay. Released him. So, all right. Some of them are still on football teams. Colin Kaepernick went 36 in that draft, right behind Andy Dalton. Also went to a Super Bowl. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh, no. Dal- Dalton's on the Saints. Sorry. He, I, didn't he just get signed today? Did he? Now that I think about it. I think he just got oh, signed today. I have no idea. I Saints. didn't hear this. I, I don't get, I don't have the alerts set up on my phone for Ant- A- Andy, Andy Dalton news. Sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> guess I should. I, I, I follow Andy Dalton on all social media. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but, but we're getting off topic. All right, I, what to were we topic even talking now. about? Oh, hard knocks. That's right. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I'll be honest. Like, I, I'm we go from hard knocks to Andy Dalton. Because I made a joke about you get a, the first look at Malik Willis. And then we got into the quarterback talk. And, no, that, that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I answered your rhetorical question. I, I know. <laughs> uh, but, like, I've never wanted hard knocks here. Like, I, I just, I've never really wanted people to see how dysfunctional this organization has always been. Mm-hmm. Because it has. Like, it, it's it's been just a total shit show and Let's cue the circus music. Thank God that they didn't come when Matt Patricia was here, and though we were on the short list for I think all of those years. So except for the year he was a new coach, because you're mm-hmm. ineligible at that point. Oh yeah. But that, yep. No, I completely agree with you because it's it's literally been a clown show for the last twenty five years in this town mm-hmm. and I've never wanted to showcase that or even mm-hmm. show that we're as embarrassing as we have been. Like it it just wouldn't have been a good look and it would have made us look a lot worse. I will say this. I do think the culture is improving in this in this mm-hmm. organization. I'm not going to say it's good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's a culture to get behind or that people are going to buy into. Players don't want to retire. That's there's that. Well, it isn't there yet, but there <laughs> are saying, things happening that from that. Like it's yes. a move from I would rather retire from football than play for this team. Right. There are things game. that are happening that give me hope for the future of this franchise. Are they is everything that I'm seeing good? No. I don't love the fact Rod Wood is is answering personnel questions in the media. That didn't look good. And then Brad Holmes said the same damn thing to back it up. Like Jesus Christ, why are we letting Rod Wood even talk about players? He's a he's he's a number guy. That's it. He he plays with the numbers for the organization to make sure they can afford to turn the damn lights on. That's his job. It is not his job to, deti- to decide who is the quarterback of the future. Does it all concern you that they are backing Jared Goff as, stra- as staunchly as they are? Does um, that tell you that he's going to be here long term? No, it's. I think it's more of they don't want to pull the rug out from under their starting quarterback when they don't have a viable option to... You know, doing damage control if things go south. Let me ask you this: What's it hurt to say we're gonna have? You know, we're gonna take a look. 
What? Hey, I wanted them to like. What if, negative? If it were up to have, me, I would have. I would not have been resigning uh, Matt Boyle and David Blau. Tim and, Boyle uh, and David Blau. Tim Boyle and David Blau, and actually brought in a legitimate backup QB for once. But like, but in all honesty, considering what we question. have, I would have. Yeah, I would. I, I would hope they would back what they have on paper. What and is not be the inconsistent downside? with their messaging? What is the downside to them saying out in public? Mm-hmm. We're going to look at all options. They pissed are you talking off- like in the draft or are you talking about in the offseason? Any opportunity, any avenue that's available that has a quarterback at the other end of it. What is the downside mm-hmm. to saying we're going to take a look at all avenues to the public? I mean, I, I think the only downside is you piss off alienated, Jared Goff. But I don't care about pissing off Jared Goff. Exactly. But considering right now okay. we don't have a plan B, then... Let's at least be consistent with but what like we if, did, if the with Lions, the actual personal okay, moves we did. That's what concerns me. Mm-hmm. They don't have a plan B at quarterback. That's what that I'm saying. concerns the hell out of so me about this. At question. least have your messaging be consistent with the personnel moves you made. Don't contradict yourself. Okay. Like, that's all I'm saying. That concerns me about this front office, that they mm-hmm. don't have a plan B for the quarterback position. They're, mm-hmm. They have plan A, and they are sticking with plan A. They're not mm-hmm. looking for a plan B. Mm-hmm. That scares me, because plan A is Jared Goff, and Jared Goff is <laughs> garbage. That scares me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't give me hope for Brad Holmes. That doesn't give me hope for this organization and this football team. And it definitely doesn't give me hope for Dan Campbell, because what the hell do you want to do with Jared Goff? Jared frickin' Goff. But what I'm saying is right now, what would you want the messaging to be? Considering we there is no quarterback we like in this draft, and they already re-signed both their, start, their backup quarterbacks. So at this point, there is no other message be, you can put out there. I want it That's to the be, only message. <laughs> no, it's not, because they can say we're looking at all options. Where? At what point now? Like, I don't you, care. You, Scour you know, the draft. Scour free agency. Scour the trade market. Dude, D- Baker Mayfield's out there. You Deshaun already Watson resigned both your traded. backup Russell QBs. Wilson just got traded. I'm saying you already resigned both your backup okay. QBs. Scour the trade market. Trade market could be a possibility. Yeah. We had three major quarterbacks just get traded this year. Mm-hmm. And about to be a fourth. Uh, apparently, the Browns want to keep Manziel. You mean fake? Don't know why. So, wow. Wow, did I go back in the That's time machine? Disrespect. <laughs> the amount of disrespect that you just put on Baker Mayfield's name right now. Wow. I just went in the way back machine. Ba- I sure to, I sure hope to God for your sake, Baker Mayfield does not listen to our show because he will be showing up at your doorstep to slap you like Will Smith. I think it's a safe bet to say he does. <laughs> Well, then expect a knock on your door and a slap across your face. And you know what? You would deserve it. Unlike you would Chris, deserve it more than Chris Rock. Unlike Chris Rock, I would sue. <laughs> <laughs> but I want the answer to be we are looking at all options. And I want that to be the truth. Because if they're not. If they're not even looking two years down the road at what could potentially be their quarterback in the draft, looking at all options, all Mm -hmm. possible future options, then that scares the hell out of me. So they're either, and I sure hope to God they are because they can't be that stupid. So if they are looking at options, why lie? Mm -hmm. Because you piss off Jared Goff? Big whoop. It's Jared freaking Goff. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I've been a proponent for giving this guy an opportunity to succeed. And, and yes, I do want to see him succeed because that means we got a quarterback. But I just I don't believe in him as a player. As the quarterback for this team. Mm-hmm. Is he going to get the opportunity to prove me wrong? Yes, I, I do think he is. He's got weapons. He's got a good offensive line. He's got capable running backs in the backfield. He's going to get the opportunity to succeed with this team. I just don't think he will. Do I think it's possible? Sure. Yeah. Right. Right. We're, just, we're on the same boat. They need to be looking at all possible options, <laughs> whether it be the trade market, whether it be God knows what. The draft two years from now. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you find a diamond in the rough in the third round of this draft. Who knows? Yeah, extremely unlikely. But they got to... They, I, I don't want... It scares me that they would be this staunchly behind Jared Goff. And I get it. It's probably 
GM speak. It's probably front office speak. I get that. But I don't know. I, I just I don't know what I expect from this team, I guess. I, I just I want to see them be a, a competent front office for once. Like, I, yeah. I maybe I'm just a jaded Lions fan who's been put through hell between we Bill all? and Mayhew and, and Quintricia eras that I just I don't expect good out of this organization. I, I don't. But. Hard Knocks. And you know what? Here's one of the reasons Hard Knocks excites me more than it would in any other year. And it has nothing to do with showcasing the city and this organization and these players to anybody else but our own fans. Because it gives the opportunity for this team to instill a little bit of confidence from the fans in this organization. Because you can show that you're a competent organization. You can show that you're a competent coach, a competent team, a competent front office, a competent ownership group who Sheila Hamp has now dropped the Ford from her name. So she's already trying to make moves to <laughs> put the past behind her with this organization. She could put a statement saying why she did that. No. Why would she? It's her own personal decision. It is her own personal decision. It's just very confusing. It's her name. Sheila Hamm. It's just, it's just out of the blue. She's turning the page. <laughs> <laughs> just like she wants the rest of the Lions organization and the Lions fans I mean, to do. I get it. The The Ford name has a lot of controversy in its history. I get that part. Well, but. especially with just the Lions. How many, how oh, many yeah. Lions fans? Oh, so and I mean just long-time Lions, Lions yeah, fans. Just Lions. <laughs> how many long-time Lions fans have you heard this team will never win until the Ford sell the team? Until the Ford name is gone. Well, mm-hmm. there's your start. The owner doesn't bear a Ford name anymore. At it's least kind of a, not, in the, kind of not in the public. It is. It is. Kind of a loop. <laughs> it is. She is a Ford. <laughs> but the optics of it look better. And yeah. like it, it just it gives an opportunity for the Lions to showcase themselves in a good light for the fans to get excited about. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're going to win 11 games this year. But it's something for this this or this fandom to believe in to believe in for years to come, and we get to have a little fun with the personalities that we have. Why? What are your thoughts at Hard Knocks? I just took up the whole segment there. No, I, I mean I I I am not as wary as you are, uh, but like you said towards the end there, it I what I like about it is the fact that I can finally get an inside glimpse as to what this supposed culture shift that's happening really looks like, um, what the driving force behind it is, what kind of personalities we have on this team. Something you don't normally get with just your everyday beat reporting, you know? But again, I've never watched Hard Knocks, so I'd, I'm not familiar with how deep they go. I honestly don't even know what to expect because I, yeah. like, just like you, I've never I, watched it either, so I don't know. I might watch the last season just to kind of get familiar with it. But. I kind of want to go in blind. Like, I, I don't want to expect anything. I don't want to expect anything, but I also want to expect something. What? <laughs> you sound like Rob Wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shall we move on to the Pistons? Let's do it. Take it away. All right. So we were going to talk about this in the last show, but we kind of ran out of time here. Month of March. Cade Cunningham has been putting up some fantastic numbers. The I think the least. I think you sent me a graphic that the only person who's put up quite the level of production that Cade has is none other than his Aaronist himself, Michael Jordan. The Michael Jordan. The, the, <laughs> and his rookie the, year, mind you. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Sorry, I, yeah. I should, probably should have clarified as a rookie, the only person who's put up these kinds of numbers is Michael Jordan, and you and Alex have texted so much, it's taken me forever just to scroll back and pull up the graphic. <laughs> uh, let me give you let me give you these numbers, though. So, in the month of March, he's averaging 21.6 points per game, 7.2 assists per game, and up until this most recent game as it's recording, it's a Knicks, he was averaging 7.3 rebounds a game, but because he somehow failed to grab a single rebound in 37 minutes against the Knicks, He's now only averaging 6.6 rebounds a game only. But either way, Cade has had a pretty fantastic month of March and has inarguably gained ground on Evan Mobley. Last time we covered Rookie of the Year race, 
Ed Mulvey was kind of he kind of was running viewed as almost he was being viewed as almost a lock for rookie of the year. Do you think that's still the case? No, I don't. I don't think he's a lock. Um, I and that has nothing to do with Evan Mobley's play. I think he's still continued mm-hmm. to be extremely consistent, mm-hmm. do what he's been doing all year long. It has more so to do with uh, Scotty Barnes has been absolutely incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. He's far and away outplayed expectations, and he's really come on in a huge way. Mm-hmm. And also Cade. Cade's play yeah. has been shit. He's been the best rookie in, in over since the All Star break. Like, mm-hmm. and he's been one of the best players in the league since the all in the whole league since the all-star break. Like he has been incredible uh, yeah. and nothing short of it. And, and a lot of the detractors are going to say, Oh, well, somebody has to score on that team. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to do this. Somebody has to do that. Look at the team he's with. And I would argue and say that, well, yeah, that, you know, you have a point there. Somebody does have to score on this team, but he's also still doing more than pretty much any other rookie in the history of the game mm-hmm. with less. Like he, he, he doesn't have a true consistent second guy. Like he doesn't mm-hmm. have a second fiddle to him. And yes, Sadiq Bay on most nights can be that guy. Jeremy Grant mm-hmm. on some nights can be that guy. Yep. But Cade Cunningham has largely done what he's done with less than pretty much every other rookie that is is competing right now. Scotty mm-hmm. Barnes has an all-star teammate in Fred Van Vliet and Pascal mm-hmm. Siakam. Evan Mobley has all-star teammates in Darius Garland and Jared Allen. Josh Giddy, sure. Josh Giddy, who's been good, who I think is a clear fourth place to the other three. But he has not much either. I mean, SGA has been good, but really really inconsistent and really mm-hmm. inefficient Cade's numbers have been excellent since yeah. the all-star break and and really if you want to de- dig deep into it his numbers have been pretty damn good since that like first five game stretch where he was terrible mm-hmm. when he first started playing after the injury <laughs> since then he's been really good shooting over 40 percent. I mean you even want to include those games from three if you even want to include those games, he's still putting up on the season as a whole. He's averaging 17, 5, and 5. Which, like it, if I recall, going back to my expectations for him at the beginning of the year, I think I said I wanted him to be somewhere between 16 and 18 and 6 and 4. How far off are we? And I said <laughs> that right there was probably enough to be rookie of the year. And guess mm-hmm. what? Here we so, are. So James Edwards actually put an article on The Athletic, and he kind of made a case for... K. Cunningham's rookie of the year, KNC slash winning rookie of the year. I just want to give you some of what I think are the strongest cases from this article. The first one is that 17, five and five number up to this point, only 10 rookies, including Kate. Well, only nine rookies of four K came to be the 10th have averaged 17, five and five in the league of those nine rookies. Eight of them have won rookie of the year. I think LaMelo Ball was the other one, and he didn't win it, right? No, LaMelo Ball won Rookie of the Year. Did he? I thought he mm-hmm. got beat out by somebody. Nope. And then okay. the, no, the only person that didn't win it was Magic Johnson. Okay. Uh, that's because Larry Bird averaged I was going to say that was Larry's year. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, that right there alone is a pretty, like, pretty strong Just case. Just out of curiosity, seven, give five, me the five. other seven names. Oh, I don't have them off the top of my head. Oh, okay, all right. I'd have to. I thought that I thought that article had them all. It did not. Um, the other case is team success without the rookie. This is just taking this rookie class into consideration here. The Pistons are two and fourteen in games when K doesn't play, eighteen yeah. and forty in games when he does. That's a pretty big swing in terms of win percentage. Um, That's a big wolf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cavs are three and five in games without Mobley. Raptors are. Actually, five and three in games on Scotty Barnes. Rockets are actually eight and Helps seven. Two All Stars next to you. Yep, exactly. It, it goes to that point. Rockets are eight and seven when Jalen Green misses time. Ten and four. Okay, Jalen Green. Plays. Let's be real. He's not even in the argument. <laughs> yeah. Franz Wagner hasn't missed time, so that that doesn't really apply. And that dude's John, been consistent. Yeah. Josh Giddy is the uh, actually the only other rookie that's comparable in terms of his team has performed significantly worse when. He's not on the floor. The third point that I wanted to make, and this is something that is exclusive to Kay Cunningham, is 
and it's James Edwards states it as something you can't really quantify, and that is the opposing defense that Cade faces on a nightly basis versus other rookies. Cade is getting double teamed more than significantly more than a rookie in this rookie class. He is the focal point of a defensive scheme, unlike anyone else in this rookie class. Which goes and back he's still to being able up. to do more with less. Yeah, and because he's still the, putting the up teams are willing to double. And he's still putting up arguably the best numbers in this rookie class. Those are James gave, Edwards gave a fourth, but it's not a metric that I really liked to begin with. So I didn't really feel like discussing it. But um, those are the three that I pulled from his article that I thought make which, a pretty strong case. Which you're absolutely right. And, and you know, it it goes beyond the statistics. You mentioned the double teams. I will say Evan Mobley's matched up against some pretty damn good defenders this, in, in this season. Mm-hmm. Like he's had to deal with the KDs, the mm-hmm. the Giannis's on multiple time, multiple times, but, he, and the the Siakams. Like he matches up against those guys. That's not an easy matchup in any way. The Adibos. usually, yeah, but usually in terms of a big, uh, your opposing defense is going to put their body on Jared Allen, their big body on Jared um, Allen. KD is not defending Jared Allen. That would probably oh, no, be like Andre Drummond's. Job. I'm talking about. Ter- I said in terms of a big, they're probably gonna put their biggest body on Jared Allen. Yeah, so, but that so, the, the biggest body may not be the best defender. <laughs> yeah. Like going up against the Nuggets, the best defender is not Nikola Jokic. Or not to mention not Vucevic. Not to mention without Jared Allen on the floor since he's been hurt, Evan Mobley's production has actually kind of suffered. Uh, I won't include his most recent game because he only played 11 minutes because he got hurt. But but up until that game, let me exit out of this. Sorry. Up until that game, Evan Mobley was averaging 16 and a half, eight and a half, and six on yeah, the that's season. Still pretty damn good. Yeah, th- that's actually <laughs> it's, pretty. That's pretty damn good. That's actually pretty in line with what he's doing. But um, the, the last four games, he's only put up 12 points, 13 points, 11 points, nine points. So it's like been a slow taper down. But um, regardless, that's still pretty damn good. It is like, pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm not he's taking got, anything away from Evan Mobley. He's got a 30 point performance in there. <laughs> yeah, I ain't taking anything away from Evan Mobley with Jared mm-hmm. Allen out. Like, in all honesty, like Jared Allen has gone mm-hmm. up against some really good defense mm-hmm. against some of the premier talent in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, so not going to take that away. Granted, he's not mm-hmm. seeing as many double teams as Kate is, but the mm-hmm. defense, I would argue, is a lot softer at the guard position than it is mm-hmm. at that wing position that Evan Mobley's matched up against. Beside the point. Yeah. If you want to look at advanced metrics, and a lot of people are, a lot of mm-hmm. the NBA talking heads do look at advanced metrics, Kate doesn't match up. He doesn't. The advanced mm-hmm. metrics are all in Evan Mobley or Scotty Barnes' favor. Very much due to the turnovers. Um, turnovers and, and it also has due a to lot shooting to do percentage. With team success. Team success plays mm-hmm. a big role in, in a lot of advanced metrics also. And that's faltering with the Cavs too. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but <sighs> watch the games. Like mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Watch the games and tell me that Cade isn't the best player on the floor. Mm-hmm. That Cade doesn't deserve this award. That Cade mm-hmm. hasn't shown a better resume of work this season than guys like Barnes and Mobley. Watch the games. Mm-hmm. Because you see the double teams. You see the the ability to move the ball. You see the playmaking, the shot creation, him coming up big in the clutch. You also see the mistakes. You see a lot of the turnovers, which is turnovers have been out of control lately. Yeah. You've seen the foul trouble, but you've also seen a leader. You've seen... Mm-hmm. A talent that uh, this basketball team has not seen since Grant Hill, in all reality. Mm-hmm. Watch the games. Like the, 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 In my opinion, Cade Cunningham is absolutely Rookie of the Year. Do I think it is, like, if there are 50 voters that 49 of them should vote for Cade? No, I don't. I, mm-hmm. I definitely think it's much more of, like, a 30-20 or a 28-23, whatever, 22. Like, I definitely think it's close. But he is the rookie of the year. And if you can call me a bias fan, go right ahead. He's got the most clutch points. He leads, I believe, all rookies in scoring. He's he's putting up numbers that are insane. He's made incredible improvements throughout the season. Mm-hmm. He's been on a stretch over the last roughly two months now that has been unseen by rookies in all reality outside of Michael frickin Jordan. The dude's yep. been stupid good. And. You know, I, I read an article from Sports Illustrated today mm. that mm. was titled "The Inevitability of Cade Cunningham," and I, I saw that and I went, "Ooh, I gotta, I gotta read this." 
And it compared them to guys like Grant Hill. It, and the one comparison that got me most excited was by the, you know, just by comparing how he plays the game of basketball, they compared him to freaking Larry Legend. Larry freaking Bird. With the, you know, he doesn't have the most athleticism out there. But you know what? He's probably one of the smartest players on the floor, and he just finds ways to get it done. Mm -hmm. And coming into the season, when we drafted him and we're talking pre-draft stuff, we compared him to guys like Luka Doncic, who, very similar. Not the most athletic, not the most explosive, but guess what? All of a sudden, dude drops 40, 10, and 12. Out of nowhere. And yep. you swear you saw him just standing up at the top of the key because he ain't that fast. But he's crafty, and he's smart, and he's a damn good basketball player. They talked about how Cade probably has the most hockey assists of any of the rookies. And by that, I mean the second assist, because mm -hmm. the other player made a pass off of it, because he was able to get somebody open. Or the uh, pass to a teammate who made a move so it didn't count as an assist. The hockey assist. He makes his teammates better than they are. Like, it, it's just a fact. I, if Sadiq Bey didn't have Cade next to him, he wouldn't have had anywhere near the level of success that he's seen this year. And yeah, it was a rough go for a while, but he's come on since Jeremy Grant went down. We've seen a different Sadiq Bey than we than we saw prior. Yeah, we saw we were, we were getting worried about Sadiq Bey before Jeremy Grant went down. Cade's my rookie of the year. Mm hmm. And the advanced metrics may not show it. And if the voters want to give it, go with the advanced metrics and not look at anything else. Well, then it's a damn shame. Why the hell do we play the games? All right. Should we do a little bit of buy sell? Let's do it. <laughs> so Pistons powered, specifically uh, Aaron Keller's dress. Put an article highlighting the second tier free agents that Detroit should target. If they strike out on some of the top names of free agency. Before we get into this, and yeah. sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Did you give an opinion on Cade? Yeah. I mean, I, I gave you I the... I mean, you what, gave me the metrics that James Edwards gave. Yeah, that, that, that that's what I would say. That's why I agree in that he should be Rookie of the Year because of these metrics. <laughs> Nothing else? Just like those metrics in particular? Mm -hmm. Hold on. There's an ad playing in my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you have this problem before we started Pistons powered website is the worst there we go apparently uh but <laughs> like that that's all though like those three metrics are why you think Cade's rookie of the year nothing else well the the other thing that's not the whole thing that's not a metric is the fact that i i think unlike any other rookie i do feel like Cade has the most on his shoulders he he's the one that's relied on in this offense unlike someone like Evan Mobley or someone like a Scotty Barnes who's not relied on. And again, Cade, outside of his first, like, what, three games where he was, you know, coming in, no training camp, no nothing. Like five of 29 shooting or something. Yeah. Like, he was he hasn't He hasn't had the type of stretch that Evan Mobley's had these last five games. Like, Evan, Evan Mobley's starting to cool off and I don't know if the injury is going to hurt he's had at all. he's had inconsistent points though where he'd yeah, put oh up yeah. like 18 he's, points have, one night and then put up like seven yeah, the next definitely have random games but I'm talking like I'm always averaging like 10 points per game over the last five <laughs> um but yeah no he'll definitely have like weird nights where he just can't hit a shot or I mean there was there were nights like when he played the Rockets and only took four shots but dished right. out double digit assists right you know, in that article I read, mm -hmm. they said that uh, Troy Weaver's been looking at this guy since he was a 17-year-old at his high school. And mm -hmm. the, the, primarily the scouts that were at that game left the game saying that he was the best player on the floor, even though he only scored two points. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the type of basketball that Cade Cunningham plays. And, yeah. and that's really he commands what commands the offense. Me. Right. That's really what excites me about him is... He doesn't need to score to be the best player on the floor. And, and that's mm -hmm. where I look at guys like Luka Doncic, where it's the same damn thing. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't necessarily need to score to be the best basketball player on the floor. And frankly, neither does Cade. Like, it, it, he's proven that this year. And like you mm -hmm. brought up that Rockets game where he only took four shots, but he had double-digit assists. Didn't he put up a triple-double that game? Like 11 mm -hmm. points, 10 boards, and 12 uh, assists or something? Uh, no, I don't think he put up a triple-double. Okay, well, there was one can, game where he only put up like 11 points, but had a triple-double, and he was clearly the best player on the floor. Like, 
Cade can oh, do that. Oh, that was a Lakers game. Okay. 13. Actually, nope. Sorry. Yeah, 13, 12, and 10 assists. Okay. If that's the triple double you're thinking of, I'm not sure. But. Yeah, I think so. Well, he's only had a few this year. He's only mm-hmm. had two. Two or three. He has, yeah, he has triple double against Cleveland. So. Those, are, those are the ones I can find. But I'm trying to find that Houston game. Like, I'm looking at the game log, but I'm not seeing it. Was but, it not Houston? Was it Miami, maybe? Oh, it was Miami. Miami. It was my. It was Miami. Uh, yep. Now I remember that. Yep. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, here it is. He took four shots. He had four points, ten assists, three boards. Yep. So, but anyways, like, give me, like, I, I, I got to hear it, because I know people hear me talk on this show all the damn time, but I got to yeah, hear up? your passion take on Cade for Rookie of the Year. I, I'm just, I mean, I, I'm curious to hear, because I feel like I give my passion take all the time, and people hear me talk to death. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know how much more I can give you outside of what I already gave you, but, like, you look at what I'm worried about with this rookie of the year race is I feel like 80% of the voters haven't actually watched any games of Kay Cunningham outside of the games that he's played against whatever team they follow. Um, because Kay Cunningham and it, it very much was at a certain point in the season, just watch the games go beyond the numbers. Now the games and the numbers complement each other. That's and true. It's it boggles my mind that four. Say that again, you cut out. You cut out. It boggles my mind that people will have him ranked as always four for a rookie of the year race. Yeah, that blows me away. Like, how how can you (laughs) even, even if you were to just take the numbers alone, how can you look at the numbers and say he's the fourth best? You want to to hear some serious disrespect? Um, This is a slightly off topic, but uh, James Edwards was tweeting from the NBA store in New York, like the main NBA store. I did see this. They have like everyone. They have, they have freaking, zero Pistons jersey. They had a freaking <laughs> no zero current Pistons jerseys. They did, yeah. they had classics, mm-hmm. but they didn't have any yeah. current jerseys. They, they had, had Chris Duarte. Chris Duarte. Chris Duarte. <laughs> they did have Kate Cunningham. How? They have Mo Bamba. You know, they didn't you know have Kate Cunningham. You know why? <laughs> They're all sold out. They gotta be. That's the only explanation that makes sense. They're all sold out. <laughs> yeah, so are the Killian A's jerseys too. Apparently, huh? <laughs> Yep, they're all sold out. <laughs> Killian's family bought those. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kidding, Killian. You know what, though? I'll say this, and this is all I'm going to say about Killian Hayes. The way he's played over the last few weeks, I'm impressed with. I like him in his yeah. role. Mm-hmm. If he can just... I'll just get 100 shots up a day in the If off-season. he can just improve the shooting. And, and honestly, yeah. I've seen him knock down some threes in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. If he can just improve on it, you know, not to stray from the topic, but I don't know if you um, in the next game, they tried out a starting lineup of Isaiah Stewart and Marvin Bagley starting together and Isaiah Stewart hit two threes. Marvin I Bagley know, hit I one. Saw um, I, saw. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can rely on that to no. happen consistently <laughs> if they play together. But no, he's all around, can't. but <laughs> it, it's something to kind of get a tingle in your pants as a Pistons fan. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and keep going with your take. Uh, so, yeah, but basically what I'm getting at is I'm at a point with Cade that I feel like if he doesn't win rookie of the year, my only explanation is going to be lack of publicity. Like That's the only way I can explain it, especially with the um, especially with the downturn. I feel like uh, Moby's taken over the last few games. The fact that he's hurt now, which I'm of the believer that this late in the season, if you get hurt, that shouldn't hurt your rookie of the year candidacy. But I don't know no, how I the agree. voters think. Um, if you played 70 plus games, you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but like in terms of when you think of rookie of the year, there have always been two types of players that have won rookie of the year. Mainly, it's been the points per game guy. It's usually the rookie usually focuses on offense and the guy who scores most is usually the winner. If he's got exceptional that, scoring, yes. Yeah, and that part's Kate. The second is usually the do-it-all guy. The guy who is who jumps up to a team and immediately is the focal point of that offense, is a focal point of opposing defenses. That part's Kate. I just I understand Evan Mobley has had a fantastic season. I don't want to take anything away from him. I just feel like Cade has uh, kind of turned a corner in the last month to where I am a little bit more passionate about him winning rookie of the year than I was a month ago. 
I would honestly take it further than a month. When was the All-Star game? Two uh, months ago? Mid to late February. Yeah, since then is where I turned the corner with him. Mid February. What his play since then has been just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and I'm, you mentioned that the only reason would be publicity. You're, you're ex- so what, you're extending it what three three games? Yes, <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> but honestly, even just looking at the game, going all the yeah. way back to like after those first three games, like yeah. the numbers are ridiculous. And yeah, especially since the All Star break, and also, mm-hmm. but if if you want to. You know, you you mentioned the lack of publicity as being the reason he wouldn't win Rookie of the Year. I'll give them this. The advanced metrics do favor the other two guys. I'll give them that. Mm -hmm. But that's it. The play on the floor says that Cade Cunningham Mm -hmm. is the best of the bunch. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave it at that. Now let's get on the Pistons powered. (laughs) All right. Let's run through this real quick. So three names. I just want you to move the buy or sell. We're going to assume... These guys are not going to be expensive, considering these are going to be some second-tier options. So First these name. are as if the Pistons struck out with the big names in the market. So the yep. Anthony Simons, the DeAndre Aytons, the Zach Mitchell Levine's. Robinson, Zach. Yeah. Uh, do, do we want Zach Levine? Pair him with Cade. That, that guy has nice. no knees, though. <laughs> but first name, Gary Harris. Want to talk about no knees? <laughs> <laughs> But he does bring some of the Pistons do need, which is three point shooting. He does. Can he, 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 he? But the thing is, he can barely stay on the floor. That's the problem. That that is my problem, and that's why I'm gonna say no, thank you. Like, One of the biggest abilities is availability, and he doesn't have it. Next. Right? <laughs> and yeah. Next, no, thank you. Like if you were to tell me, I'll give him, you know, seven, you know, five to seven mil and a and a, a sandwich sponsorship to Jimmy John, sure, to come mm-hmm. off the bench, yeah, why not? Yeah, but. No, he ain't playing second fiddle to Cade because he wouldn't even mm-hmm. be the second best option or third mm-hmm. best option in all reality. Uh, mm-hmm. No, thank you. So uh, Yusuf Nurkic. Nurkic. Oh, man, he's got so much this, talent at the five, but like mm-hmm. another one where the availability just is not there. There's that. And again, yeah, I, I like Yusuf Nurkic as a player. I don't know if he's the type of five that we need on this roster right now. Also fair. Um, he, he's like, not that great I think defensively. We need a rim protector. Like, yeah, he's um, not that great defensively. And, he's yeah. got a lot of talent offensively, though. Mm-hmm. Yes, 100%. Now, if we were like... Like, he would basically take up Isaiah Stewart's role, is, is basically mm-hmm. what, it, what it would be. Um, You'd probably see him take a Linux role, but getting the oh, yeah. minutes of Isaiah Stewart is mm-hmm. what you'd see. Yeah. So Isaiah Stewart and Olenek would basically basically be swapping minutes, and then Nurkic would be taking Olenek's role. Mm-hmm. Is what you either, either way, it feels unnecessary, which is yeah. why I think I'm going to pass on it. I mean, how much are we talking paying him? What's he making right now? Because I would say it's an upgrade from Olenek. Maybe not in terms of three point shooting, but no. But I'm hoping we solve that through the draft, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what. What would Nurkic go for? I have no idea because the injury puts a huge the injuries put a huge wrinkle in it that I have no idea. Mm-hmm. So he's currently making. Oh, I thought Basel reference has salary info. Never mind. I usually does, doesn't it? I'd have to go to like Spot Track or something. But um, I got it. Twelve million dollars this year. Yep, AVV of mm-hmm. or AAV of twelve mil. And. I don't think he's done anything to make less than 12 mil. No, I'd probably say he's somewhere on the 15 mil range. Yeah. Which, oh, honestly, if you're bringing in Nurkic, that would probably tell me you're letting Bagley walk because that's what I would expect I, I, Bagley I like to go what for. He's been bringing so exactly. far. Exactly. That's why I say no. <laughs> because that's um, probably what you'd be br- bringing Bagley back for at that 12 to $15 million range. And mm-hmm. I'd rather have Bagley. He gives me some availability. He gives me some explosiveness that Nurkic would not. Final name on this list, TJ Warren. For reference, he's currently making 10 mil a year. If I could get him for less than 10 mil a year, yes, because he'd be a pretty nice defensive piece off the bench. He'd be a pretty nice piece off oh, sorry, the he's bench. Making, sorry, he's making 12.7. If I, can get him for <laughs> less, again, if I can get him for less than that or equal to or less than that, that's not a terrible mm-hmm. option. Like I, I like TJ Warren as a player. Um, he's not a guy that's going to make us contenders, but he's like mm-hmm. all the names you mentioned. And I'm going to put TJ Warren in mm-hmm. particular are guys you add to a good team 
to make them a great they're, team. To, they're all guys with an injury history too. Yes, but they're Peter guys. Warren has never played 70 games in a season. Right. They're guys you add <laughs> to the team as like the final piece to put it all together. The glue yeah. guy, so to speak. Yeah. Which those that's usually your second tier mark in the PNC yeah. is those guys and guys. So but that I, being said, like I'm not excited about any of them, and I don't think the Pistons should waste mm-hmm. money on signing a couple of those guys mm-hmm. and closing up all their cap space. Yeah. Like I, I, if you're gonna spend money on a free agent, go for it. You know, of those three names, I think TJ Warren's probably my favorite in terms yeah. of the fact that I, I like what he'll provide probably off the bench for this team, but mm-hmm. just a two way ability he provides in terms of shooting and defense. Right, 100% agree. Like he's probably the one that I like the most, but I'd rather the Pistons go for it and give a big offer sheet to a guy like DeAndre Ayton if we're going after a guard in the draft, mm-hmm. which I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what to do with the drafts with this team anymore because the guys I was I was really zeroing in on have like fallen off. Like Chet Holmgren's almost like fallen off my radar. It's not uh-huh. that bad, but his tournament was so terrible that I'm just like <laughs> All right, maybe he's number four. <laughs> oh, and then you look at Paulo Banchero, who's been amazing in the tournament, and I'm yeah. like, well, shit, this guy may actually be the guy. And he was like my least favorite of the big right. four names going in. <laughs> um, all right, actually, speaking of, same author. Let's talk dream scenarios real quick to close it out. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you five dream scenarios. I want you to give me your favorite. Okay. All right. Can I give you Where's- one of my own then? At the end. Okay. Uh, well, want me to just give it to you all at once, or do you want to comment as we go? I'll comment as we go. Just try to run through it quick. All right. Dream Star 1. This involves both draft and free agency. We get Zach Levine and Chet Holmgren. K. Cunningham, Zach Levine, Sadiq Bay, Chet Holmgren, Isaiah Stewart, starting five. There is so much. There's too much risk involved in that. With Chet Holmgren not potentially panning out and Zach Levine being a guy who probably needs a knee replacement in the next two years, that's too much risk for me. I'll pass. It, uh, the upside is incredible, but yeah, the all- offense there would be so nice. The upside is incredible, but Zach Levine <laughs> needs a knee replacement, and Chet Holmgren has a really, 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 really low floor, mm. but also a really, 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 really high ceiling. That's a lot of risk to put in that in in, in that in those acquisitions. Dream scenario number two. In this scenario, we extend Jeremy Grant to a four-year, hundred million dollar deal. No, but it also, invo- <laughs> it also involves us uh, bringing in DeAndre Ayton and drafting Jay and Ivy. So it's Kate Cunningham, Jay and Ivy, Sadiq Bay, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre Ayton. I don't know if you did any research on how the money would work, but <laughs> oh shit! Okay, now you're talking a little bit here. Um, how would the money work? One and two. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, what I, you're tied two. up after that between Jeremy yeah, Grant and DeAndre Ayton. Yes. You're tied up. Um, I'm kind of worried Grant, about the ability to keep Cunningham and Sadiq Bay. After that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Jeremy Grant would have to be willing to take a major step back offensively, like becoming the yeah. number five option on this team. <laughs> and I well, don't think the number be one last year, to yeah. number five, <laughs> the number five option on that team. And I don't think that's going to happen. So I'll probably pass because there's no way this one actually happens because one, the money won't work. Well, yeah, these are all dream scenarios and none of these pro- probably none of these will actually happen. All right, number Let's three. Just say my dream scenario does not involve Jeremy Grant. This, this one is interesting. Okay, Miles Bridges and Paolo Banchero, your free agency and uh, draft acquisitions. You basically have a nonsensical lineup of Cade Cunningham, Miles Bridges, Sadiq Bay, Paolo Banchero, Isaiah Stewart. You're going no two guard. Is basically what you're doing. Yeah, you have no guard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't know how this would sound work. Like a dream. This sounds like a dystopian society. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, sure, but how the hell do you make that those wings work? There's only so much space out there. That's what I'm saying. And then, like, defensively, like you got three which guys that who, virtually who play those, the same position. Let's be who's real. Gonna, here. Who's going to guard the second guard in the opposing team after Kate Cunningham? Like, are you going to put Miles Bridges be, on the guard? Are you going to put Sadiq on the guard? Bridges or Sadiq, depending on who the guy is. I mean, it would have to be Bridges Shadi because I'm not putting Paul Bancher on a guard. No. I sure as I'm not putting Isaiah Stewart on a guard. You quite literally so. have three guys that play the same position in that lineup. All right, I think this one is this is the fu- uh, is this the front? No, there's one more. This one's wild. The last one wasn't. This is trade Jeremy Grant for uh, Port to Portland for a first round pick. They draft both Chet Holmgren and Bendik Mathurin and sign DeAndre Eaton. So you have Cade. Ben Math, Sadiq, Chet Holmgren, DeAndre Ayton. 
Um, I'm going to be honest with you. This one's not that far off from mine. <laughs> my dream scenario. But what's the point of signing Aiden and drafting Chad Holmgren outside of you guarantee at least one of them's a good player? Yeah. Like, is the Aiton trade or the Aiton signing insurance for Chet Holmgren? Or are you just straight You're up saying... starting them both, I mean... Are you straight up saying Chet Holmgren can't play the five in the NBA? Because at his size, he can't, but... I mean, I, I like him at the four, I'll I be honest with you. In he both scenarios here, pounds. in both scenarios uh, that were presented here by Aaron keller Strass, he's had Chet Holmgren at the four. So you've got Cade, mm-hmm. Mathurin, mm-hmm. Sadiq, Holmgren... Eight. Eight. I'm in. I mean, <laughs> like, is that even a question? I think oh. that's the best. I think that's my favorite one so far. Never going to happen. But I think it's my favorite that's, one so that's far. That's honest to God, not that far off from mine, <laughs> like, at all. Thank God we're talking dream scenarios and not uh-huh. um, what we think is going to happen. All right, final one. This one's interesting. DeAndre Aiden and Jabari Smith. Uh, we trade Jeremy Grant for the ninth pick in the draft. Uh, we draft Johnny Davis at nine. So we have Cade and Johnny Davis as our backcourt. Sadiq, Jabari Smith, DeAndre Aiden. Cade, Sadiq, Smith, Aiden. And who was the guy you mentioned they drafted at nine? Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis. two from Wisconsin. This one's a lot more realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't consider this a dream scenario, though. This one's a lot more realistic. You don't think a backcourt of Jabari Smith and the other streams? It's a defensive nightmare. You mean Cade and Johnny Davis? Sorry, uh, I'm I'm in uh, front court. Of oh, front Cade and Jabari Smith. That is a matchup nightmare. You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean that'd be great. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'd, that'd be <laughs> it's great. A five out, no win system. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but in all reality, a five out. I don't know no how it looked defensively though. That's the thing. A five out, no win system. Mm-hmm. Only works if you have the two best shooters in the entire league. There's AK, one Golden team. State. Yep, there's one mm-hmm. team that's made that work, and it's Golden State. Mm-hmm. And you could even argue a lot of the time they still played a four out one in with mm-hmm. Day in the middle. And and the player drafting Johnny Davis went from 39 percent from three in his freshman year to 30 percent in his sophomore year. So I right. don't know what you're getting three point wise right. Johnny Davis. <laughs> so that one doesn't excite me as much. Mm-hmm. Um, was that the final one? That was the final one. Here's my dream scenario. Okay. You trade Jeremy Grant to Portland. Okay. At number two, you draft one of Jay Nivey or Benedict Mathurin. Mm-hmm. Portland's pick probably falls somewhere inside the top ten. I'm assuming. You grab best player available between wing and center. Or big big man and center. So it depending right. on where Portland's pick is, maybe you get Chad Holmgren. Doubt it, but He's not going that far down. No. Um, well, it depends on where Portland's pick is. It's the lottery. You never know. Yeah. Uh, so now Ben Math is projected between like six and ten usually. So then you get. I, so then you get. Uh, but if you want another like big wing, maybe Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray was another name. Like if I had to put three names on the list, it would be Ivy, Mathurin, Murray. And not talking the big men. Yeah. Not talking to big men. Now, if you want to say it too, you grab Chet, then you grab Mathurin, fine. Then we're literally just going back to the one scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's the case, I'm not necessarily grabbing Aiton. You could. I'm bringing back Badly or Bagley, and I'm going to look at Miles Bridges probably at that point to play the three. You've got, mm-hmm. so then you'd have a Cade, Mathurin, Bridges, Sadiq. Holmgren. So you, you would do Bridge to the three, Sadiq at the four, not Sadiq at the three, Bridge to the four? Uh, I would say, Sadiq, what would you rather play? And go off that. Okay. I know the guy you'd probably be paying is Bridges, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm rolling with Sadiq as my guy. Mm-hmm. I like what I've seen from Sadiq at the three. I mean, that's basically where he's playing almost exclusively this year. Which is fine. Year, if, so. if he wants to play the three, then he's playing the mm-hmm. three, Bridges playing the four, and then you've got Chad Holmgren at the five. Now, yeah. this is requiring Chad Holmgren to add 40 pounds. But if he does it <laughs> and continues to be the same guy, mm-hmm. which I don't know how you can add 40 pounds in any frame and have them be the same guy, <laughs> but still, you've got to Or you can be KD and not add much weight and somehow become the best player. KD's still added 30 pounds coming into the league, if I remember right, or 20 pounds coming into the league. Like, he still added quite a bit of weight. Yeah. Like, I think he came in at mm-hmm. 215 and he now mm-hmm. weighs close to 240. 
Kevin Durant came in at 225. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really have to add that much weight. Yeah. He now weighs 240. He's still added and 15 pounds. Chad is a is 30 pounds lighter than what when, what KD came in at. Right. You'd have to add a minimum of 40 pounds to Chad Holmgren for him to be. And if I'm not mistaken, Chad has what, an inch or two on KD? Um, KD's seven feet tall. He's got an inch. Mm-hmm. So for Chet Holmgren to stick around in this league and not get snapped in half, he's going to have to add 40 pounds. Yeah. Like, and that's see, but that's what worries me about him is because there's no like we have nothing to compare that to. Like, mm-hmm. you can't look at the at draft history and exactly. say there's this type of it's player a, a that added for 40 pounds. Pick. Right. There's the so the much pick. risk with Chet Holmgren. But mm-hmm. dream scenario. That's what I do. Mm hmm. And you really don't even need to add bridges, frankly. It's just, yeah. it'd be cool. But there's your home run mm-hmm. swing in my mind. It, yeah. I mean, I personally like Jaden Ivey better than Benedict Mathurin, although Benedict Mathurin looked really good. I think in the almost tournament. everyone does. <laughs> um, actually, surprisingly not. I was going through the comment section on a Pistons post that related mm-hmm. to their draft and a lot of people did not like Jaden Ivey. People well, yeah, were saying, there, I mean, there's people that don't like Jaden Ivey, yeah. But, like, but they I'm were sure. saying, oh, I like Mathurin more, Benedict mm-hmm. Mathurin's the guy, blah, 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 Chad Holmgren, mm-hmm. no. Like, the common consensus was no on Chad Holmgren, mm-hmm. no on Jaden Ivey. Yeah. Most people like, wanted, I'm, and also no on Keegan Murray. There was I'm saying if you look at, like, fans. if you're looking at, like, consensus mock drafts and draft boards, it's usually Jaden Ivey top five. Mathurin, six or somewhere right. six And, and that's also how I value it. Like, yeah. I, I think Jaden Ivey, like, Jaden Ivey has become, after this tournament, my favorite pick of the bunch. Like, just for the Pistons fit. Like, they needed mm-hmm. to desperately. Kojo yeah. ain't the guy. No. And I don't like the free agent I, stock at the I'm, two anyways. So I'm done watching Kojo minutes. Right. The only thing I would say would get me off of Jaden Ivey was if we brought in Anthony Simon because he's a free agent, well, a mm-hmm. restricted free agent, but a free agent. Yeah, that's the only way that I would that would get me off Jaden mm-hmm. Ivey. Or if Chet Holmgren magically added thirty pounds before mm-hmm. the draft and showed me that he can still like mm-hmm. jump through the roof and shoot the ball and run the floor. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, my my dream was the second last scenario we presented, which is the then that Chet Holmgren scenario trading Jeremy Grant, bringing in DeAndre Ayton, which. Very similar to what mine is. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, Aiden, Aiden or Bridges, honestly, it depends on whether or not Chad Holmgren can play the five. That's all. Yeah, I, I just, you're going to be well over luxury tax if you want to retain that starting five. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? Can we, for once in this damn town, pay the luxury tax to yeah. win a goddamn title? Tom Gorse has said he's willing to. So. Good. Prove it. I mean, yes. He did, did in the Blake Griffin years. How'd that work for us? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, he did it futilely. Is that a word? Fu- futilely? Fu- whatever. Uh, Futilish? <laughs> Futilishly? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he did do the Blake Griffin years because Sam Van Gundy um, brainwashed him. <laughs> but uh, Those were some dark times in, in Pistons yeah. fandom, man. Let me tell mm-hmm. you. The SVG years, like, yes, we had some fun with it. We got some great memes out of it, but... Now, actually, I think I think we were in the luxury tax in the later end of like the Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond, Tobias Harris team. I think that team was in the luxury tax what before. What an embarrassing team to pay the luxury tax for! Hey, Tyron Lue is taking Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, and Co. <laughs> to some wins. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with the West is so damn terrible too. Yeah, that division. Who knew that it was going to be a shit right. show? Um, um, anyway, that's all I have. That's, that's all, all I got. To so we'll end it on that, guys. Thank you for listening and hanging out with us. Give us your thoughts. You know, what are what's your Pistons dream scenario? I'm curious to hear what it is. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Andrew, one last question. Yeah. We've been long saying that this offseason is not the offseason that we want the Pistons to go for it. Mm-hmm. Is it now? Because bringing in Aiton or Bridges is going for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm of the belief that neither Aiden nor Bridges are going to actually be available. Well, there are RFAs, so probably not. Um, I, I would argue that a huge offer sheet for either one of them yeah. will make their team sweat. 
true. And I know there's been a little bit of turmoil with Aiden and Phoenix, but I just don't see Phoenix while they're still a championship contender, just letting Aiden walk. I'll agree with that. I think it's more likely that Bridges is the one that <laughs> they'll let go over Aiden just because I, they I have LaMelo and Rozier mm-hmm. and I just think you, you're going to have more possibilities next offseason. I don't disagree. I just I hope if they don't go for it this year, they don't mm. just spend the money on guys that are going to be here for three years and making mm. like I don't want to see multiple 12 mil a year yeah. for three year contracts. I want short one team big friendly year. deals, short uh, team because, friendly deal, less than two years. You, like I'm I think you have to deal. Don't you have to spend like 85, 90 percent of your cap? Every year yes, I want so. like a one year deal. Yeah, because I want the cap space next offseason mm-hmm. if we're not going for it. Yeah. So, but anyways, that is going to close it out. Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next week. Follow us on Twitter at Real Fan Report. Thank you to Detroit Sports Podcast. Andrew, thank you for joining me as well. We'll catch you guys next week. This has been the Fan Report. Was by fans. For fans. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your week. Peace out. Peace.